Yeah, you just gotta deliver those packages. Yeah, yeah. I'm here for the job offer. I, I, I'm here for to work. Hey, you look kind of... Oh, hey, buddy! Oh, my God. Really tough. You work here, too? Oh, my God, I run the place. What do you mean you run the place? I run the place. I run everything. Well, anything within me is put the contract. That's a contract to work. Contract to work. Contract to work. That's fine. I need a job. I got this in the mail. Basically, I'm here for the job. So what am I, a delivery driver or something? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're just going to be delivering boxes. Oh, that don't sound bad. Well, what happened to the old delivery guy? Well, he was crushed by boxes. What? He, he's okay. He, he'd just be drinking fluids and food through a tube for a while, and he'd pooping in a bag and well, he'll be, be fine. It's not, he's, it, he'll probably be back in you know, oh, you know, you know a while. You know. It's okay, Tough. I'm used to this. I need a job bad. Okay, so um, how do I get started? Well, I've got a uniform for you right over there. Well, why is there an energy drink on it? Oh, we just like the logo. Oh, okay. Well, hold on. I'll, I'll, it's motivational. Uh, let me get in the, the uniform. I'll be right back. All right. Hurry back. So, how's your fit? That all looks very good. Okay. Um, so, I just deliver packages, huh? Just packages. Oh, it can't be that bad, can it? No, it should be fine. Okay. Is that my first delivery there? Yeah. Yeah, that's... Okay, cool. It's part of that one. Part of it? What? One, one, one. You can start there. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, this is bull crap. All this crap here uh, oh. I'll deliver this one package that's all they're getting this is bull crap uh. hey hey, hey uh, how you doing there buddy pretty good how about you P pretty good I'm just delivering this package you mind getting out of my way you're not gonna like this deliveries what's it DiGiorno no well, nice. um to meet you oh that's nice hey look Romans not again. I can still see you. Why are you doing this? Spiders man! All right, here. Here's your package. Wait a minute. You look familiar. Are you related to Tuck McDuckin? I'm Buff McDuckin. I'm his cousin. Oh my god, I just can't get away from these assholes. You know, normally you guys have like a contract. Damn thing. Did you order this package? Yes, I did. Here, here's your package, all right? Oh. What the hell are you... What the hell's in the box? Oh my god, it's a huge dog turd! What the hell's wrong with you guys? Don't worry about it. You know, you know what? Screw this, your whole family's crazy. I quit, I'm out of here. You won't be missed. It's me, Nate, aka Devil Dog, and I'm back with my ultimate Death Stranding review. We're going to start off with the Collector's Edition unboxing, move on into the, the game review itself. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what you get in the Collector's Edition of Death Stranding. Ugh. Big box. First up, let's see if the game is in here. The game is actually in here with some digital content. So you get a Death Stranding 
steel bookcase. I like that. That's really cool looking. On the back, nothing. It just says uh, Hideo Kojima Productions. Uh, nice little metal case. Um, you get some special features with this collector's edition. You get the Death Stranding full game in the steel book case. You get a statue. You get a uh, Luton's minifigure. And then uh, you get sunglasses, power skeleton, gold armor, all terrain skeleton uh, uh, outfit, armor plates, and avatar set, and a Timefall original music. So you get the soundtrack as well. So a lot of in-game items with this as well. But okay, a little bit of editing there. It took a while to just get out of the box. And uh, you get a briefcase. You get a briefcase. Okay, uh, it's overall not the best quality, kind of a cheap plastic briefcase, but you get the case that Sam Bridges Porter, or Sam uh, Porter Bridges, sorry, my bad, actually uses to uh, carry uh, items in the game. I'm pretty sure I know what item is in here. Okay. Oh, interesting. It's got some nice bone rubber. You got your, oh, that's tiny but cute. You get a mini Luton's figure. It's a keychain. Interesting. Then you get a roll of, uh, what the hell is this? What? <laughs> you get a roll of damage tape. <laughs> Okay, okay, damage tape, and, okay. Okay, and last and certainly not least is you get a one-to-one -one real size replica of BB, the bridge baby, and it lights up. It's got the little bridge baby handle. As you can see, it does light up. Let me get this thing close so you can really check it out. Now, there is no fluid or liquid in this container. They just got it looking like there is. Um, but honestly, as you see, it's like sitting on a little pedestal, has his umbilical cord still connected to it. And as you see, the overall, let me turn this off because, man, that's kind of bright. There. As you can see, the overall quality, flip up, toggle the open case cover. So it's a very, very good detailed replica of the bridge baby that you would have the Sam Porter Bridges has in Death Stranding. Okay, hands down this has to be one of the weirder collector's editions I've seen in a long time. Right up there with I think it was the dead, um, what was it, uh, Riptide, Dead Island Riptide when we got a bloody torso of a woman. They never released that one. It's kind of creepy, his eyes are open staring at you. And, uh, oh, it's anatomically correct. <laughs> well, that's a little boy. <laughs> How about that? But um, let me put BB away. In this collector's edition, once again, like I said, you received your void tape, your mini figure Luton's keychain, which actually goes on the front of this, by the way, just so you know, your bridge baby, your collector's edition steelbook case of Death Stranding with a bunch of DLC. And it all comes in this handy dandy, cheap, but um, rather decent Sam Bridges Porter carrying case. Now, if you go and you pick this up today, which is kind of hard to find, they, these things have been selling out like hotcakes. Don't know why, I guess people want babies. Um, this thing will set you back $200 for this collector's edition. Now, if you actually calculate it and you figure the game is 60 bucks, um, you know, you're looking a little over, you know, well, about $130, $140 for this. And uh, is it worth it? No, most collector's editions aren't worth the price you pay. Um, but I'll be honest, it's definitely a, a unique, a unique item. I mean, 
I mean, first of all, the game's weird enough to begin with. I don't, that don't even stay in there. That's that's kind of it's kind of a cheaply made thing. The case is cheap. Oh, I'll be honest. The case is disappointingly cheap. Looks like it might break really easily. But honestly, the uh, bridge baby, hands down, <laughs> it's creepy. It's definitely creepy. <laughs> but it's really neat. And considering it does light up, that's actually pretty interesting. But um, that was my review of the collector's edition. Now it's on to the game review. Enjoy. Death Stranding was just released on November 8th of 2019 on the PlayStation 4 and will be coming soon to the PC. This unique title featuring Norman Reedus as the main protagonist Sam Porter Bridges as a freelance uh, porter, pretty much a delivery man who in essence delivers packages after a cataclysmic event known as the Death Stranding separates most people and cities of America. And as the story progresses, you get entangled in an epic story the Reconnect United States. Now, as you travel the gorgeous and gigantic world with your trusty BB, your bridge baby, which helps you see and avoid these creatures known as BTs, or beached things. They're technically spirits of the dead, and normally they'll actually appear in your adventure as you're traveling with these packages, um, as something known as time fall occurs. Well, you will see upside down rainbows, and it will start raining, and the rain pretty much ages anything that it touches which is really really cool and at the same time kind of really disturbing now the whole plot behind this game which actually why it can alienate a large amount of people is in fact the main structure is you are delivering packages which does consist of you having to deal with weight uh, issues where you place the packages and also your balance now as you're going through the game world you'll have to come across all kinds of different obstacles to deal with including everything from rivers snow mountains hills and more and you'll have to to focus heavily on making sure to keep your balance and not falling over by the use of using the trigger buttons and your analog stick to make sure that Sam is able to keep his balance, also basing on where you place your packages. So there's a pretty in-depth um, a thing you can go into to actually adjusting where you place your packages and as you progress and level up your character with the life system you'll be able to uh, modify and have new equipment to help you carry more and alleviate issues of you falling over like with exoskeletons vehicles and other things as you progress through it doesn't seem to really take off until after you get through chapter three and that can take a good amount of time before you get there so this is a very very slow paced game. Now, as you go and you make deliveries, you will get likes from these deliveries, and like I said, they're used almost sort of like in the upgrade system, the upgrade Sam. He'll get stronger, he'll be able to carry more, and unlock items as you go through, and this way, as you keep increasingly delivering packages without damaging, hopefully, you will increase bonds with different groups and areas, and be able eventually to get them linked back up on the network, which is known as the Chiral Network. Now, as you do this, this is where the game actually gets even more unique over the aspect that once you actually connect to the chiral network with certain areas, things will start appearing on your map and in your game world to help you from other players. You will never see another other player in this game. It is a single player only experience and very, very story heavy, story driven, high cutscenes, long cutscenes, but very well done. And the thing that's really weird about it is you'll start getting certain things to pop up in your game. Now, as you get far enough along, you'll get the use of 3D printers and other things that you can build generators, safe houses, bridges, and more. And the things will actually appear in your game from other people's games. So if somebody places or builds, let's say, a bridge across the river, and it gets a lot of likes, that will appear in more and more people's games to actually help you out. So you will have other players building stuff that will be added into your game. Now, don't worry, I've noticed, well, what about the haters? What about the trolls that purposely build stuff in a way that makes it to where you're just screwing someone over? Well, you don't get likes. And when you don't get likes, 
gets it gets removed from the game. So um, you know you won't have to worry too much about too many trolls actually doing stuff like building bridges or putting ladders somewhere that leads you to your death because they won't get likes and they won't stay in the game. It's only when you have a high like counter that the objects and things you place in the game will actually appear in other people's games. Now, as you go through, you'll have to use all kinds of trusty equipment you unlock, including ladders, like I said, 3D printers, and weapons galore, because as you go through and try to make your deliveries, you will also have to deal with these other delivery guys, simply known as mules. They are basically people that get off the, on the thrill of stealing other people's packages and delivering them for their own reasons. And at first, they can be kind of annoying. You can actually avoid them from just steering clear, but they do see seem to have their hideouts and stuff based right in the central area of where you're traveling to. And uh, they will ping your uh, your packages with these little uh, things they have out in the game world that will let them know that your current location of where you were. And at that point, you want to get as far away from there as possible to avoid dealing and having a confrontation with these mules because they will hit you with like stun sticks and try to knock your, your packages off and steal them. Now, as you progress far enough along in the game, you will get a different equipment and abilities to actually alleviate that. You can, of course, sneak up on them and knock them out, but you'll get neat things later on like bolo guns that wrap them up and knock them out and stuff like that. And the main thing about this game is it's promoting friendship, it's promoting hope, love, and passion in the terms of not killing anybody. You can kill people, but it's not recommended because that plays into a lot with the other world. Now, what I mean by that is, is there's certain scripted moments and also certain parts in the game that are rather dynamic that will happen and occur along with the time fall. When the rain starts hitting, that means the BTs are present, the beach things. And at this point, that's where your bridge baby comes into play. By activating your bridge baby, it'll give you this little robotic arm that will point at the nearest BT. And what you want to do is hunker down, hold your breath with a button, and make sure to sneak past them as slowly as possible not to get their attention. Now, if you're able to avoid these BTs and get out of the area, everything's fine and you can continue on with your package delivery. However, if the BTs spot you, it'll go into this little phase where they all try to grab you and pull you down into this black tar and you have to try to fight your way free. If you are not successful in fighting your way free, it will pull you into this alternate area, which is very neat. It's very well done. The world around you will morph into this flooded area with different objects that will appear and you will have to fight a BT boss. And early on, it can be kind of nerve-wracking and annoying to do this. Later on, you'll actually get different perks and abilities to help you fight them. But you also have the ability of other people from the other games that'll be there to kind of throw you special things like certain items to help you beat these bosses, which actually makes it way, way easier. And when you can just leave the area, it's kind of tricky, but if you try to leave the area, you can't avoid the fight altogether. Now, by defeating these guys, you will get these crystals that will help you with certain items later on. Once you progress far enough, you'll actually be able to, at uh, the save points, take Sam's blood, urine, and feces, and actually be able to turn it into weapons that you can actually use against the BTs. You can also upgrade your uh, normal guns and weapons later on in the game, like the Bolo Whip gun, to where you can actually use it to actually um, subdue the BTs while they're out in the world. It won't defeat them, but it'll slow them down to where you can sneak past them. So it's rather interesting on how they do that as well. Now, the whole thing about this game, hands down, it has to be one of the most cinematic, one of the more, I'm going to call it an art house AAA game, because this is honestly a very artsy game to where a lot of people are saying they would have made a better movie than a game. Now, if you aren't a fan of the overall structure of how this game can be, I can see why a lot of people are going to be jaded and not like it. And that's perfectly fine to each their own. This isn't going to be a game for everybody. This game has heavy exposition. It has some corny dialogue. You, it needs to have a lot of patience and passion to play through this game. It's got some really odd stuff to it because if you played any Kojima game, you're going to know the guy is a very odd character. 
character. It's got weird product placements like constant drinking of monster energy drinks. It's got parts where you're like taking a shower and you'll have an ad pop up to block uh, the, you know, the nudity of Norman Reedus as you get in a shower promoting a show ride on AMC. So it's got this weird fourth wall breaking part including with Norman Reedus uh, like making faces at the camera and other expressions when you get to your safe house then it's very very odd and, and everything about this game the somberness of when you're out you know in this game world where you feel like just so alone with this music that's playing is so beautiful and well done but I can't see a lot of people not really getting in to the gameplay loop of just delivering packages because that is the main mechanic in this game now in the end Death Stranding is a game about connections hope love and isolation a true work of art in both its story design and its overall world and while some won't like the overall gameplay loop and slow methodical mechanics if you stay steadfast throughout Sam's journey you will be treated to a very unique title that only Kojima and his fans will appreciate I applaud Kojima for taking such a risk with this new title, and I hope him and the rest of his team flourish in the future with more unique titles like this in the future. In the end, I would have to say I am absolutely loving this game, but at the same time, I can totally understand and respect people that just think this game is just a waste of time. This was Nate, a.k.a. Devil Dog. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video. Hit the bell icon to stay updated whenever I release any new videos. Leave a comment below if you plan on playing Death Stranding. If you played it, what you think of this title? Do you love it? Do you hate it? What are your feelings on it? And remember, I always end my videos by saying, Have fun, play hard, and remember people, the devil is in the details. Peace out.